For a built environment to be all it can be, each individual with sufficient talent and drive should get equal opportunity in creating that environment. Kitu ki hoy jokon she built environment design kora hoy ekhi dhoroner manush diye nishchoi onek jugantokari bhavna sthaboni kora hoy na. Onek shombhabona hoyi narira shujogi pai na tader protibha ba dokkhota prokash korte. দূরেই থেকে যায় আজকের এবং আগামীর স্কাইলাইন ছোঁয়ার স্বপ্ন থেকে ওয়েলকাম টু শান্তা লাইফ স্টাইল প্রেজেন্স দি আর্টিস্ট্রি অফ লিভিং আনাজরা মাহমুদ অ্যান্ড আই এম টকিং অ্যাবাউট ডাইভার্সিটি ইন আর্কিটেকচার অ্যান্ড ডিজাইন টুডে অ্যান্ড ফর দ্যাট আই হ্যাভ উইথ মি দ্য প্রিন্সিপাল আর্কিটেক্ট অফ মেরিনা তাবাস্টন আর্কিটেক্টস আর্কিটেক্ট মেরিনা তাবাস্টন A Bangladeshi architect and educator, Marina Tabassum, founded Dhaka-based Marina Tabassum Architects in 2005. In her work, Tabassum seeks to establish a language of architecture that is contemporary yet reflectively rooted in place, always against an ecological rubric containing climate, context, culture, and history. Her Baitul Rauf Mosque is distinguished by its lack of popular mosque iconography, its emphasis on space and light, and its capacity to function not only as a place of worship, but also as a refuge for a dense neighborhood on Dhaka's periphery. Mirabha Kamal Hassan. Hello, how are you? I'm good too. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Mirabha, I'm going to talk about architectural relevance in your own name, Patha Bhutishuni. What are its implications when it comes to improving the lives of the masses? Right. Well, you know, architectural relevance, when I talk about it, it's not just only about the, uh, you know, uh, it's it's not something that I've come up with. It's a, it's a I would say, a concept, uh, sort of a philosophy or ideology that is there in the world. Now, what is relevance? Anything can be relevant if you can give it a proper um, kind of uh, rationality. So it's quite subjective, but what we generally mean by relevance or architectural relevance is about time, what time we're living in, you know, the context of time. So that is what is important uh, for us to understand. So Shekhane, if you want to look into that, you see that you know, we're living in, a, in an era of pandemic. And then once we hit the pandemic, a lot of issues came about uh, talking about all the different ways we've been living our lives, you know, the extraction of uh, too much of resources mm -hmm. and all of that. So basically what we see is that we are heading towards a climate crisis, which is already evident in our Bangladesh, which is one of the most pressing issues. And then we also see the disparity among people, the way people live their lives, um, you know, the disparity between the, uh, the economic disparity, first of all. Secondly, there are so many other issues that uh, that are there so what are relevant of our time mm. is what we kind of try to talk about and that's where the architecture of relevance comes in so um, how do you think um that kind of that can improve the lives of uh, the masses like how do you think that comes into um, right. play yeah well basically uh you know if you look into the whole aspect i mean I, let's you know, take the pandemic as a as an example mm. When it hit us, um, all of a sudden the whole global supply chain, which is a long supply chain actually, of all the different resources and material flow, and you know, it, 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 all of a sudden it stopped because most of the world is uh, dependent on China or many other yeah. countries, which are industrially much more, yes. um, you know, has actually taken over the entire world's. Um, Need. So basically, we all entered into a point where nobody had anything anymore. So if you look into what I also talk about vernacular, because of that reason, is the values that we have, which is about sourcing materials from your location. Mm. So sourcing material in your location is not only for vernacular, but that's a value that we should also address uh, in our time where you're not dependent entirely on a long supply chain, mm -hmm. that you're not completely dependent on something uh, from another country or somewhere else that you are completely, you know, uh, so we really had a difficult crisis when everything was kind of stopping, mm -hmm. stopped. And so it seemed became very really, difficult. Yeah, where, I mean, a lot of projects were stalled because there was not enough uh, material to, to work with. So that's something I think it's important to see which actually a value which was there 
originally when we sourced everything from our location. So that's one thing I think is very important. And then also the climate crisis, which in a way among the Bangladeshi and the architects, we are still very much dependent on the, or we address our buildings or respond to our buildings, uh, the idea of uh, natural ventilation and everything. So those things are still in practice. And I would suggest that, you know, especially all the architects uh, should keep that in mind constantly that, that architecture is a response to the climate and the geography. So, so yeah, basically that's what is relevant, that's what we're thinking about as an idea. And also uh, looking at the people uh, or the craft, the artisan, uh, the skills that we have in the country. How do you employ your own people to create something? It's your only artisanal quality that you are crafting. I mean, that's kind of becoming completely obsolete slowly because of our uh, being so much dependent on industrialized elements. So that's also something I feel uh, is very important at this time that we look at these issues. Of course, you're talking about uh, vernacular architecture. Um, how much of a role can it play in sustainable design? Right. Well, vernacular has been sustainable. It's zero carbon footprint. There cannot be anything more than that. It's material from the location. It's it's a response to the climate. Mm -hmm. It's also employing people uh, who has the skill to build. So it's it's an absolutely people oriented architecture. So I feel that the values are important, and how as architects um, who are formally educated in a certain mm -hmm. European or Eurocentric understanding, how can we bring our own understanding and the values and bring it to architecture? That's where I think it's important. The thing is, why KJ? Why vernacular became something of the core, or let's say something of the past? Is because at a certain point in time, especially let's say in the last two decades, uh, we have tried to standardize architecture, mm. standardize the construction system, globalize the, the, yeah, the entire industry of construction has become quite standardized because of the scale, the speed, and everything. But due to that, we have you know forgotten a lot of values. Mm. And I suggest, or I always feel that those values are something we definitely need to address and bring that. So are we, uh, would you say we're losing our uh, I don't know, historically significant ways of building uh, things to modern architecture? To some extent, yes. I mean, we follow the quest. That's one issue. Uh, it's, it's not always good to follow everything that you, you see. It's always important to also analyze and to make it contextual. So our context has a certain way. We have a large population. We have a certain kind of climate. We have a certain, uh, you know, geographical formation. Those things are very important. The moment you just follow uh, without really having an understanding of the context, uh, then it really becomes difficult. So appropriation, I call it appropriation, that you need to appropriate whatever you have uh, in your location. So basically, that I think is important. Very true. I'm sure. The next question we want to ask you face that a lot. Um, আমরা অনেক ছাত্রী দেখি কিন্তু যারা আর্কিটেকচার করছে কিন্তু ওয়েন ইট কামস টু প্র্যাকটিস ইন প্রফেশনালি আমরা অত নারীদের অতটুকু নারীদেরকে পাই না মানে এই সম অসমতাটা কেন ওয়েল ইটস আ ইটস আ বিগ কোশ্চেন দ্য থিং ইজ আই ডোন্ট নো ইটস ডিফিকাল্ট টু সে বাট দ্য ফ্যাক্ট ইজ আমি অ্যাজ ফার এজ আই হ্যাভ সিন মাই কলিগস আই সি লট অফ Architects who happens to be women, that's how I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> Architects who are also uh, women. Um, there, there are a lot of them who are doing really good work. Uh, I know a lot of talented architects uh, who do not probably come to the forefront or you don't see them much often, so that's why they're not known as much. But I know many architects who are in practice, um, maybe not as a singular practitioner as I am, Uh, running an office, but maybe they're in partnership. But there are also many architects who are have, who are running sole practices also. Uh, but there are many, many of them, and some of them are doing really good good work. Um, especially, I know that many of these architects are working in humanitarian projects, mm -hmm. which is, I think, uh, is an absolutely noble and very important work that's going on now. But at the same time, it is true. that we don't see as many i mean if you look at the if you look at the uh, 
amount of students that are going into architecture, like probably 60% nowadays is are women mm-hmm. uh, or female and uh, 40% would be male. And then when it comes to practice, uh, practice requires a lot of a lot of involvement, a lot of effort and time. I don't think time, I don't, I don't think effort is an issue or talent is an issue. The issue is about how you balance your work life and your let's say your domestic life that's where it becomes a struggle and it's not just in architecture it's in all, all profession that's where we see women struggling and especially when you're in, uh, in architect in the field of architecture when you're doing a practice a practice requires a 24 hours involvement in many ways you are designing you are handling your clients you're handling the sites um, you are so you are actually in one you're everything so for that, you need to have a constant you know, involvement and which is quite difficult. Mm-hmm. It's not always easy for um, you know, women who has this family, who has children and children by themselves are projects. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I really think that that balance is something where when you have uh, work life and domestic life, how do you bring a balance? Do that. That's where everybody struggles, and quite often they give up on their own uh, dream and aspiration, and you know, and kind of compromise and give more time to the other part. So I think uh, that's where I don't think we have yet been able to find a balance, and and that also it's not I I just don't think it's the architects' issue. It's also the fact that we were not able able to give uh, women that mm. uh, that ground where they are capable of also maintaining this balance. Our academy is becoming much more easier with this pandemic when we have Zoom and all these working remotely has become a norm. Mm. Uh, even men are preferring to work remotely in many, in many countries and many places. So I think now it probably would be much easier when you work remotely. Architecture, it's not always easy because we work in a team, we have design works, we have to have a team work requires physical presence to mm. some extent. Also site visits, you have to go. But then again, I think there is a possibility where you can bring that balance having worked remotely. Thank you so much, Varnava. It was a pleasure talking to you. I would like to finish up with one question. How much of diversity is important in architecture? Why? Diversity in what respect? In all respects, like inclusivity in architecture. Of course, yeah. Well, of course. it's. You know, architecture is a, a it's a discipline which has which has embraced or which has to embrace all different uh, disciplines. So it's it is not one actually. We call it a bridge between science and art. But the science part is of course the construction and the engineering part. But also at the same time, you know, there's so many different aspects of science that we do: physics, chemistry, everything, even biology. But the humanities part is also quite interesting where, you know, we call it arts, but I do not just see it as a, as a creative art, but it's also the humanities where you deal with social issues, where you deal with all the other political, cultural issues, which, so it's, it's a combination of everything. Everything comes together and creates a balance through which we get a good architecture, let's say. So diversity is absolutely key to this whole, whole endeavor. So basically, I feel like you know it's it's always a multidisciplinary, very collaborative process, and now more and more architects see the value of this collaboration and multidisciplinariness and bringing diversity, of course. Thank you so much, Apple, once again, and um, keep amazing us with your creation. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Mahatma Gandhi said, "Our ability to reach unity in diversity will be the beauty and test of our civilization." And we all know that without diversity, any profession suffocates. I'm Yazra Mahmoud, Ajbidai Keep in mind that every space is a canvas. Create your masterpiece.